My name's Alexis and I'm a new nurse. I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience working with COVID patients and my experience contracting uh, COVID-19. So I'll start back. Um, I graduated nursing school in December and then I got my license this past February and um, at that time I started applying to new graduate programs near me and um, that's really when COVID kind of started coming to the U.S. and um, it was kind of hard to get a job at the time at a hospital because a lot of the hospitals in my area were putting on hiring freezes and not hiring new nurses and trying to get experienced nurses to work in their ICUs um, because of COVID, that's where the biggest need was. So I was in a place where I was a new nurse looking for a job and wanting to help out in this COVID crisis, but not exactly knowing how to do that or where I should be working. Um, so in California, we went in to our stay at home lockdown in March. Um, I believe it was around March 16th or 17th. Um, so I spent March, the rest of March, April and the beginning of May not working. Um, I was looking for jobs, but there was nothing really that ended up working out for me or that I found. Um, and then of course staying at home. Um, so that was like my big focus was just staying safe and healthy um, for that time period. But um, I came across an opportunity to start working with COVID patients in the middle of May. So I started my nursing career. I went into it knowing that I would be working with COVID positive patients. And so my first assignment, I was at a SNF for three weeks and I was working with other nurses, um, PAs, EMTs, paramedics, um, and we were all deployed at this um, school nursing facility and trying to help out the facility who was inundated with a big influx of COVID positive patients. So that was in the middle of May and um, that was my first time working as a nurse and working with COVID positive patients. Um, and then after that assignment, I took a week off and then I started working um, right away. I went to a different assignment. Um, I was at a new place for about a week and then after that assignment ended, I got sent somewhere else and um, my newest assignment, I was um, tasked to be on a strike team and once again, like this whole time, all of my assignments have been like specifically for COVID-19. And so I went into this job and this role knowing that, you know, COVID-19 is taking over our country as far as like people getting sick and having to be hospitalized. And I knew it was a risk that I could contract it myself, but I always felt safe at work. Um, my employer gave us the proper PPE. I had a N95 that I was specifically fit tested for, um, put on a new gown every time I went into the unit. We wore gloves, face shields, all of that was provided. So I always felt safe. Um, we were taught the proper way to don and off the PPE. So although it was a risk working with these patients, I went into work every day feeling safe. So I have luck, have been lucky enough where I haven't seen the worst of, of what COVID can do to your body, but I have seen how sick it can make people. And it's been a learning experience. And then, you know, another big thing is patience. Um, it's hard for them to kind of, it's hard to build like rapport and that trust when you're in, full of PPE and they can't really see your face or your smile or connect with you and we kind of all look the same. We all look like we're just blue people walking around in our gear. Um, so that was a challenge. But one thing that at my first assignment we did, we had our faces um, printed out and put, and we would tape it to our PPE. And so they could at least see what we look like and try to remember us and our faces and 
know what role we were in. Um, so mine said my name, Lexus RN, and had a picture of me smiling. So even though they couldn't see me smiling through the mask, they could kind of get an idea of what I look like. Uh, me and my team, um, there are six of us including me, we were on an assignment at a skilled nursing facility and um, one of my team members started uh, coughing and had a fever and so she was tested um, and it turned out that she was positive for COVID-19 and so in the following days the rest of us um, got sent back to our main facility and were also tested and um, in the meantime like from the time my friend tested positive to the time we were tested only one of our teammates started to feel symptoms um, and that person got a fever um, I felt fine I was working long hours like 20 hour days 16 hour days overnight um, so I felt tired and like a little fatigued um, and just like kind of run down but I was attributing that to not sleeping to not being on a consistent schedule um, nights as hard as it is but working like a weird schedule consistently I was just really tired and um, so I wasn't feeling any symptoms I never had a fever I didn't have a sore throat I didn't have a cough um, so we came back to the, our facility and on July 1st, I was tested for COVID-19. And um, on July 5th, I received the call that I was indeed COVID positive. Um, it is hard being isolated and away from everyone, especially when I do feel really well. Um, I started working because I really wanted to help out. Um, I was tired of being at home and just sitting around and I really enjoy my job. I like what I do. I like working with COVID patients. I like being able to help out. But I've had a lot of time to just think and uh, contemplate. And one thing I just really want to share with anybody who's watching this and listening is um, when I'm working with COVID patients and when I'm at work, like I'm safe. I'm practicing, you know, proper PPE usage. Um, and I'll never really know exactly when, where, who, like how I contracted COVID. I could, you know, think about it and kind of pinpoint to maybe the day or something, but I'll never know for sure. Um, but what I will say is as safe as I am at work, I think in the past couple weeks, our society, and I'm in Southern California, so like specifically here, where um, restrictions have been uplifted and bars were opening again and restaurants were opening again. I think like as a society, we kind of let our guard down. And speaking for myself, I think I also let my guard down in the sense that I had been working with COVID patients for, let's see, like almost two months at this point and hadn't gotten sick and felt safe, like always felt safe at work. And so the last thing that I thought was gonna happen is that I'd get it at a restaurant or at a grocery store or like from a coworker when we're not at work. Like that's something that wasn't really crossing my mind at all. And I think that was naive on my end. I would just encourage you all to not let your guard down. Um, I'm really lucky and thankful that I'm asymptomatic. Um, at this point like I'm gonna recover and I'll be okay and I can go back to work and and my life hasn't been disrupted all that severely um, but we don't really know why some people get sick and why others don't like I don't know why my coworkers got a fever and a cough and I haven't and so I think as much as I was in the state of mind like Oh, I've been working hard like I want to enjoy a meal with my friends or something at a restaurant like yeah that option was available to me and that's something that I did but in retrospect like was it the smartest decision probably not you know like I was just putting myself at risk and putting others at risk too um, <clears throat> so not to say like we need to like stay at home and fear 
but honestly this virus is going to continue for a significant amount of time in our society and if you can avoid it like I would <laughs> try to I would I would avoid going out if at this point like in Southern California the bars are closed again and um, the restaurant and restaurants are closing too but if they do open in a month or however long like I would just encourage you all to really like imagine like is this the day you want to contract COVID um, because it's really just takes that second that you go outside or and like you could get it at the grocery store too but the more times you're in public you're just putting yourself at risk um, and we don't know another like scary thing that I keep thinking about is we don't know like the long-term effects um, I know they're doing research and they're still talking about you know, is there permanent lung damage to people who survived COVID? Is, <clears throat> excuse me, is there other issues that we just don't know about? So, um, you know, I'm gonna continue working with COVID positive patients. It's something that's important to me. Um, I love being a nurse, even though like I'm so new, um, but I love my job, I love what I do. Um, I love the people I work with, the patients, you know, it's important to me that like I'm there for them. But um, for all you that have the opportunity to keep yourself safe, keep your family safe, and keep our society safe, I would really encourage you to do so. I realize that I'm in a situation where I can take 10 days off work and my employer's paying me for those days, but not everyone is in that situation and a lot of families are depending on going to work. They're frontline workers, they're essential workers, um, and they're getting forgotten about. So I would just encourage everyone to do their part. <laughs> At the end of the day, in my eyes, this isn't a political issue. It's more an issue of humanity. And I think we can all agree that we want to get through this pandemic with the least amount of pain and suffering and deaths as possible. And um, we all are in control of ourselves and our actions and we can all play a part in making sure that this virus doesn't spread. So I encourage everyone to do their part, wear a mask, wash your hands, and stay healthy.